When criminal enterprises seek to use a limited liability company, LLC or DBA, doing business as, and change it out, because of the liability restrictions, an invention done so other scammers can get away with it, but they're just legitimate businessmen, they change the name. When you're coming up with thought terminating cliches, look at the spelling for that. When you're trying to glitch the matrix of uh, getting away with crap, changing what words mean being your business, you already know from the title, means eventually get people get used to whatever you're calling it, especially if it's a short name. So if you want to keep things as scramble brains as possible, you don't use short names for a damn thing. Why? Because then people will recognize it quickly and your thought terminating cliche works against you. So, how do, gran how do quantum grammar Nazis avoid fact-based reality traps by their magic and faith-based methodologies? Bypass languages, or to bypass language itself, to make judges, cops, or politicians, or anyone else in power, any authority figure, stand down so the hunters become the hunted, because that's the Aha, take that science attitude. When people go out of their way to contradict reality. Because reality doesn't prop up what they wish to believe or have happen. So the claim here is that you can use a special incantation or wording to cause them to be terrified and overpowered. And you will see people posting videos like this where they claim, the cop is terrified of what I'm saying. And he's just looking at you like, for fuck's sake, really? I was going to have lunch in a minute. The, the priority of the police officer in almost every video is, oh great, yet another idiot, yet another boat captain, yet another person claiming to use maritime rules 800 miles inland. Because that makes sense, somehow. As long as you don't look shit up. Magic and faith-based is being used in this case to get a reaction out of you. The idea that your religion or belief which is what this is, whatever way you want to wrap it up, is allowed to overrule the laws of any land by you making up your own rules. I believe Bible law should be invoked. Okay, you're being stoned to death tomorrow for stealing. Uh, every bit of it. I would actually make it to where it was a law in the United States that if you wanted to invoke anything ever previously created as a legal basis and you wanted to actually go that route, that the punishments would immediately apply because if you don't know this, in the past, every single good old days methodology y'all thought of, you know, like literally witch trials where having a scar on your left leg meant you would be burned at the stake, were invoked to make it to where the accused cannot be exonerated. The whole point is to push them into doing whatever they're told to do to have the least painful death. We have grown as a species, we've evolved, whether you fucking like that word or not, to where we have a presumption of innocence. We have a presumption that a person should not be un un encumbered by special language or special rules that are unreasonable. And this is actually acknowledged in the court system, and it's something that you, me, and everybody else has the absolute legal right to get away with shoving down the throat of the government, the politicians, and the cops. You can just pass a law in a city, county, or state that forbids any police department from using any form of uh, unionization to block justice. You're guilty of obstructing justice. We're a union. Then you're dissolved. That's the instantaneous effect of it. Get the fuck out of the way and let we the people prosecute the dirty cops. You don't like in the United States, in a particular area you're in, having usage of, let's say, fluoridation in the water. Okay, get together and pass a rule that says you don't fluoridate the water. That's that simple. No, no, no. Let's argue ineffectually so we can perpetually have a hobby for 20 years arguing that it causes name that illness. Well, we have to start from the groundwork and please give me money on my PayPal. No. Did you want outlaw it? I, I came from a city of... Uh, my adopted city because I grew up on the other end of the state where they would literally just remove the power of the politicians due to the power of the people being overruling it uh, every time they did a dirty backroom deal about putting fluoride in water 
It's not that the fluoride was bad for us or it was being done in an unsafe way. It's that they wouldn't allow the people to make the decision. They went out of their way stubbornly to not discuss this. Well, it's a health issue. We keep overruling you. You bargain with us. They didn't want that because they wanted some company to pay them, you know, bribe money. And every time one of them did it, they, they, the, whoever was responsible for the latest incantation of that was very likely to get removed from office. Because if you're willing to take bribes from some large company that wants to set up, you know, even if it's beneficial to us, if you're willing to take bribes, and they always did, you're fired. That's why we the people are mentioned so prominently in a little hunk of paperwork a lot of people ignore, and also in this video. So what is a vectitious litigant? A vectitious litigant is someone who shows up in court to waste the court's time with no actual attempt at achieving an outcome. This is something that's actually against the damned law in courts because it was seen as a way to harass a judge. Judges and the legal system have a huge amount of power over people. And most of the time, not always, but most of the time, they don't abuse it because there's so many people involved, it would literally be a conspiracy. Your local county sheriff and judge and, or state or just your city can have this kind of thing happen, and it does happen. But for the most part, the majority of the time, the legal system is not meant to be an abuse system done by criminals. It can be abused by criminals. It can be used by anybody, including you, to do all sorts of crazy crap. But if it happens enough, it is determined that it's fictitious. You're doing it to be an asshole to somebody. You're not using it because there's some harm that's been done or that you deserve to be compensated for some accidental problem that was caused. You're just doing it mostly to harass people or whatever. And yes, I'm going to invoke Church of Scientology. The purpose of a lawsuit by the Church of Scientology is not to win the court case. That's the last thing you want to do. It's to keep people bogged down in paperwork for years and years. One of the types of fictitious litigant, a reverse fictitious litigant, is a person who would delay the swift processing of their own court case to make it take longer, knowing full well what the outcome was, by bogging down the whole thing with delays. You can see this happen with really rich people who hire really clever lawyers who can skirt just below that limit, where they harass the legal system for years and say, hey, I'll stop wasting your time if you, uh, if you agree not to prosecute my, uh, my felonious you know, Epstein over here. The trouble with this is that also resulted in lawyers and just random people who claim to be able to get away with this to be declared victitious litigants as, as well. Some people are victitious litigants who are full-on bar certified. You know, they're actually, you know, bar allowed in your state lawyers, but they're legally forbidden from bringing in a case because of victitious litigation. They weren't disbarred. They're just told you're not allowed to bring a case. You're allowed to run a company that does, but you're not allowed to have any hand in it because of your behavior. They punish their own much more cruel ways than you can think of, leaving you a lawyer but not letting you practice and not legally being able to take money as a lawyer, only as a, a figurehead at some law firm. And your name gets struck from the name set in some cases, depending on the state you're in. Punishing you and leaving you there, not even finishing you off. You know leaving you like a zombie or a soulless mass floating in the ocean. Fake federal, I can't pronounce it, truth or judges, of the unity states of the world, Russell J. Gould and David Wynn Miller, did this sort of thing, not even being lawyers, but being incompetent at being lawyers, not being able to practice at law and became fictitious litigants in the fact that they would do things that were very obviously designed to tie up time to prevent any of the following. Uh, prevent tax collection on taxes that were owed. Claiming taxes don't exist. Making up ideas that don't exist. Um, a good example is a sophisticated mathematical understanding of language. That would be my territory, by the way that proves that mortgage documents are fraudulent if they're done a certain way, when all of them could be done exactly the same way, but special purpose usage of this math routine would prove one document was better than the other. Specifically and selectively applying these rules so that they only apply to whatever they don't want, 
meaning unfair litigation. This is something that's done by lawyers all the time, but it doesn't get past, it doesn't pass muster in a court normally because you're demanding that a law apply only in a particular way at a particular time so that you can win a court case. That's not fictitious litigation, that's called being a normal lawyer, but you're supposed to be stopped by this adversarial system. But the reason David Windmiller and Russell J. Gould lost every case and lied about it later, you can lie about losing a case all you want to, but you can't collect and you can't keep doing that. They were declared victorious litigants and lost every case because of unintelligible complaints. They failed to win any case. They failed to state any cognizable, recognizable, or understandable, or comprehensive, or cogent claim or allege any comprehensible fact existed, or comprehend English word definitions, or refuse to demonstrate any understanding of the law, and in fact demonstrated an a, a, uh, adversarial attitude towards actually using the law as printed, in many cases plain English, because they wanted to redefine the words depending on what they were trying to prove, and then not apply this as a standard or consistent definition set for anything else. Every one of their definitions you look up are based on them trying to win a specific case or win some specific argument, trying to basically invalidate the concept of law in the United States, making it a lawless country, or making it not apply to people for specific reasons. But these interpretations are carefully chosen, which is somewhat clever, so that they can win all of these cases in a very narrow range of maybe 50 of them or so. And then post that when it would contradict their goals in other ways by redefining words you can give them any meaning you want to. And that's a great tactic. That's even been done by evil people like Bill Gates at one time in a court case. But that's not how language works or law works. The idea here is that you take a law that's been deliberately written in English so you and I can understand it, so we know what we're going to court for, because we have to know why we're being prosecuted. We have to be able to comprehend it. We must understand why we're in court. And taking away that understanding and taking away even the somewhat precise language of Latin or some other language that, that laws were written in at one time, or at least used for short references, destroying that, destroying the very meaning of words, creating a 1984 Newspeak language version of the law that nobody can understand except these two guys. So they can win a couple of fucking cases so they can avoid paying taxes or a parking ticket. Or paying off an agreed upon contractual obligation for a mortgage, which is a specific case I'm citing. And losing, not because the, of the merits of the case, they didn't come in with a case that had any merit, losing because they refused to use a language that could be used in a courtroom. One of the rules in a court is you all have to be speaking the same language or the court case can't continue. So, of course, let's bog it down. Once it was determined very easily that this was their intent to somehow stymie or, uh, or bamboozle the court. They were forbidden from arguing the case anymore, mostly because one of them or the other would at the time not be a person concerned with the case. You're representing someone else. You're incompetent to defend yourself in court, much less someone else, so you're not allowed to do it anymore, and the cases were lost. You're an incompetent lawyer and a less competent fake judge. And on that note, the judge assertion was based on the assumed continued existence of a 100-year-old archaic, or more, archaic and now defunct federal postal court created expediently a long time ago and then dissolved. Not related to the real civil court operated by the U.S. Postal Service whenever they have to deal with civil cases and just get them quickly done unless somebody wants to go through the ordinary, you know, civilian, you know, civil court. That's all it's based on and also violating every rule in the actual U.S. Postal Court that exists, if you want to call it that. All of this so that they could create fake versions of things, like the initialism in the title of this video, for correct sentence structure, communication syntax, or quantum language parse syntax grammar, or some other stymieing word set like that, so you can avoid being able to look it up. And that's why you found this video, because I used the abbreviated version and the full version of the bullshit one that spelled out C-S-S-C-P-S-G-P. You can read it in the title. It's the same thing. They just rebranded it. Like a criminal trying to avoid being caught, not paying their taxes. Or paying the piper. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.